This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. We're in Miami. Delighted to be joined by Arthur Jones the third. Arthur, I haven't seen you since we're in the UK. How you been keeping? I've been good. How about you? Very good. Thank you for asking. Let's talk about you. Obviously here for this big night of boxing, Miami Thursday evening, three world title fights, a couple YouTubers as well. How excited are you to chalk off the first one of the year? Um, I'm very excited. You know, 20, 2019 was a good a good year, but I think 2020 is going to be even better for me. What is it you're hoping to get out of Thursday? Is it about learning? Is it about enjoying the occasion as well? Uh, everything. You know, it's business, but uh, I want to, you know, learn, you know, Get, get a couple of rounds and, and hope, hopefully finish, you know. Is there a couple of fighters you're looking at on this bill? You know, you've got a couple of fellow American world champions on there that you're maybe looking at and thinking one day. Yeah, um, Tevin Farmer, you know, slick, you know, hard to hit. Maybe one day, you know, but um, yeah. I'm just looking, you know, observing. This is business. Um, Demetrius Andre, can't wait to see him fight. Um, you know, Jojo Diaz, you know. I was a fan, but I have to go with Tevin Farmer over him any day, you know. You can't hit what you can't catch. Now with yourself, just to go back to last year, you had the four wins, uh, your final fight of the year, a really good learning fight for you at 19 years of age. There was that headbutt, you had to deal with maybe a bit of concussion and feeling a bit woozy in there. Got the win, how much did you learn from that experience? I learned uh, a very, a very lot. Uh, you know, headbutts, they're going to come. It, this is not the first time or the last time it's going to happen. But, you have to deal with adversity and uh, you have to continue, but not show it. You got to keep that poker face. And what is it you've been working on in the gym since then? Obviously, from then through the Christmas period as well. What is it you've been trying to do in the gym from that? Uh, just really trying to uh, settle and uh, finding a chin, you know, placing my punches. You know, amateur is points, 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 points. But, you know, in the pro, you have to really sit down, you know, look for the chin, you know, start hitting a little harder, you know, littler gloves. And um, I'm looking to clean it up. Now, you obviously turned over so young. I believe you're only 19 years of age still. You mentioned in that transition from trying to, you know, that amateur style to maybe sitting down on your punches a bit more. Do you feel like you're getting there now? Um, I feel like I am slowly, slowly but surely. But um, it's going to come, you know. Uh, no rush, you know. You know, uh, fighters this young really don't, don't turn pro this young. So, uh, you know, I got time, you know. I'm going to keep going and going and going. It's going to come surely. We've seen the young American fighters signed to Eddie, keeping really busy since they turned professional. You had the four fights. Austin Hammer Williams on this bill as well. He was very busy last year. Is that the plan again this year? Just be as busy as possible and keep learning? Yeah, busy as possible to, to get that knowledge, man. You know, that's it. Now, obviously, as I mentioned, the last time I saw you was in the UK. Now you look back on that experience. How much did you enjoy it? Not only sort of mixing with the fans, fighting in the legendary York Hall as well. Yeah, uh, it was a good experience. Uh, York Hall is very legendary. And, um, you know, fighting with a lot of England fighters was good, too. So, you know, I kind of uh, still got to learn the lingo down there, you know, cheers and, and stuff like that. I still got to learn that, but uh, no pressure, no pressure. Now it's on Thursday night, you're facing Juan Santiago, by far your most experienced opponent. I think he's had 31 fights or something like that. Have you seen much of him? Do you know what to expect? Uh, I, I watch a little film on him. Uh, I know what to expect. You know, 30 fights. That's a that's a, a lot of uh, experience, but uh, you know me, uh, the slick, you know, come come to box real good. I'm not gonna back down. You know, uh, I'm gonna look good and I'm gonna handle business. When you're on these big shows and you're racking up the wins and getting all this big fight experience, is it sometimes hard to rein yourself in and not just want to push on too quickly? Uh, sometimes it's hard, but you know you gotta control your emotions. So. Um, I just go out there and, you know, try to stay calm, you know, try to listen to my corner and try to get the job done, try to get them out of there. Now also on this card with you, we've got the big screen up here with everybody on it. I'm seeing the two YouTubers, Jake Paul there from your country and Neeson Gibb. We had the press conference just before yours there. What have you made of this whole boxing and YouTube sort of crossover and what do you make of this fight that you're sharing a bill with as well? Uh, you know, bringing the YouTubers is smart from Eddie, you know, the YouTubers they have a lot of good following. and. Um, I'll be surprised if, if, if this arena doesn't be packed and, and sold out, you know, so it's very good. Now, obviously, you've got your sister here as well preparing for Tokyo 2020. How excited should we be about another talent in your family right here going into the Olympics? Well, you should be very excited. Uh, she just solidified her spot. She's number one at uh, 152, and, you know, we, we're looking to, to go to the Olympics. You know, this will be our second Olympian from our gym. You know, we had Charles Conwell. Now it's going to be my sister, you know. I'm just pumped for her to go and 
man, come for her to go win that gold, man, and represent the USA. If you can, can you try and explain what boxing means to your family? Obviously, it runs in the family. There's so much talent there. What has it meant to you all growing up? It uh, uh, meant a lot because um, we just all wanted to make our dad proud. You know, our dad started off boxing, but he never uh, really stayed with it. So, um, yeah, I was wanna, we all want to make our dad proud and uh, st st stick with it and uh, keep the Jones legacy going. That's it. Post-Olympics all being well, do you think we could see a Jones double act on a matchroom show very soon? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe not, you know. Uh, we had to ask Eddie about that one, but, um, yeah, she, she, she's going to be doing her thing. And I'm going to be doing my thing. We're going to keep the legacy going, just like I said. Final one before I let you go, Otha. Next month we got a huge... America v. Britain clash. We've got T Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder throwing it back. WBC World Heavyweight title. How do you see the rematch playing out? Well, I see the rematch. Uh, if, if Tyson Fury can survive, then Tyson Fury will get it, in my opinion. Because Tyson Fury, he's very slick and off uh, uh, defensive. You know, you can't hit what you can't catch. But, you know, he slowed down in the first fight a little bit, so he got caught. But if he survived, I, I think he's going to win. Uh, but... Deontay Wilder, you can't forget about Deontay Wilder's strength. One punch can do it. So, you know, it's a 50-50 fight. You can throw it up in the air. We're going to see who wins. What do the fans see Thursday evening from Otha Jones III in Miami? Uh, they're going to see a slick, nice boxing. Otha, thank you for your time as always. Best of luck Thursday. I'm sure we'll catch you very soon.